Compared to normal plug-in use, Ara integration in Studio One offers you additional freedoms. The work is faster, more transparent, and offers further musical possibilities because Melodyne enjoys direct access to the audio data and is simply better integrated. But one thing at a time. Open audio events within Studio One directly in Melodyne by menu or shortcut. With ARA, there is no transfer process. You go straight to each note on every track. And when you copy or move events, Melodyne follows the changes automatically. You have two views. Here in clip mode, you might see, for example, this event. The light area contains that which is inside the border set by the DAW. Against the gray background, you see what else you might hear if you were to move the borders in the DAW. In track mode, on the other hand, you see the contents of all the successive events in the DAW. The gray lines show the borders set in the DAW. Here's an example of which mode to use when. When copying a vocal track, you generally choose track mode. With it, you notice immediately whether the splice points in the DAW are well chosen or lie in the middle of notes. If they do, move the borders in the DAW and you can see it once in Melodyne when you found the optimal position. Whenever you alter the comping sequence, Melodyne updates the display immediately. Here you see the contents of the blue take. And if we switch now to the green take, Melodyne immediately shows its contents. So, already while selecting your takes, you can see whether performance errors can be easily corrected or whether it might not be better to pick a different take. Now, problems can arise when comping for which there was up to now no solution. If a vocalist so much as altered the phrasing from take to take, you'd find that, wherever you place the borders, at least one note would end up with a bit missing. The solution is to adjust the notes in Melodyne. To do this, select the note that doesn't quite fit and switch to clip mode. Then shorten or move the passage in question until it fits perfectly within the area with the light background. Then switch back to track mode. The transition between takes is now perfect. When switching from track mode to clip mode, you determine by note selection which event you get to examine more closely. From here, for instance, you'd get to here. And from here to here. Once you're in clip mode, you can jump from event to event just by clicking in the DAW. Now, for example, you're here. And now here. And in track mode, you have a clear overview of the sequence edited in the DAW. So far, what we've seen applies to all Melodyne editions, starting with Melodyne Essential. In the large Melodyne Studio, you can also show a list of all the tracks in which Melodyne is in use. From it, you can select several tracks for simultaneous editing and correct, say, all the backing vocals in one go. You can also display a track, such as the lead vocals, purely for reference. Then switch all dub voices to edit to match the timing or improve the voice leading. Unison tracks can be fanned out by clicking here. Now you can access any note swiftly and perform the necessary editing. When you're done, close the fan. The balance between the tracks involved depends on where you click to commence playback. If you click the ruler, you mix everything with the DOM mixer, the tracks being examined in Melodyne and all the others. If, on the other hand, you commence playback by clicking in the background to the notes, all you will hear are the tracks shown in Melodyne, still in separate mixer channels, but with the option of controlling the balance between them internally. This lets you focus acoustically on the editing without having to readjust and disturb the DAW mix. Having two playback options serves an additional purpose in clip mode. During DAW playback, all you hear is the light region. During local playback, you hear the gray regions too. So you can check the region borders using DAW playback. See at once if notes are being cut short and remedy such problems easily. 
Listen again. Now it's okay, but listen to this note. It's not played cleanly. Perhaps further along there's a note we can replace it with. Let's switch to local playback so we can listen to the gray area. Here's the same note played cleanly, so we'll use it. Just copy and paste. So far, we've been editing notes. Now let's talk about tempo. If you combine recordings taken from songs played at different speeds, the tracks are out of sync. If you add Melodyne, though, you can look at the tempo of each audio file because Melodyne is able to detect the original recording tempo from the notes themselves. Let's have a listen. From these constantly changing values, Melodyne calculates a tempo curve, adjusts the grid accordingly, and also generates a click. So this retrospective click follows the musicians, not the other way around. During DAW playback, Melodyne can now adjust the original tempo by time stretching so that it matches the tempo set in the DAW. In my example, this is a constant tempo, so the airing tempo of my bass part is tightened up and matched to that of the drum loop. This conversion of the original to the target tempo only works, of course, if the tempo of the recording was detected accurately. For particular applications, you therefore have various options for influencing the tempo detection. Let's go through them step by step. When it first imports a file, the DAW knows nothing about its tempo, so no adjustment can take place. In Melodyne, however, you already see two tempo values. The first is the song tempo. This will be the target for the adjustment. The second is what Melodyne has identified as the original tempo of the recording, which should become the starting value for all calculations. For this reason, you have to share this information with the DAW. You do this with the Confirm option. The upshot is that the DAW learns the tempo from Melodyne, the calculations can begin, and the audio event will be in sync with the song. Sometimes, however, no adjustment is necessary. If an audio file was recorded directly into the current song, the intended tempo is obviously that of the song, and no time stretching is therefore necessary. In that case, select Apply Song Tempo. The file and song tempos will then be identical, and no time stretching will take place, unless and until you change the song tempo. If, on the other hand, you bring in a file that was recorded in another session with a known constant tempo, select Apply Constant Tempo and type in the value here. This will then form the starting point for the conversion to the song tempo. In the studio and editor editions of Melodyne, you have the further option of tempo assignment. The application then switches to Note Assignment Mode, and the Tempo Editor opens. Here you can influence details that might influence Melodyne's analysis of the original tempo. You can correct any detection errors, or change how the tempo is counted, for instance, by switching to half or double time. To check your work orally, listen to Melodyne's metronome. For any changes you make to the curve here have no effect on the notes played, but do affect the click track. Once you're satisfied with this, switch back to track or clip mode, and the DAW will then use this optimized tempo curve as the starting point for its tempo calculations. Instead of adjusting the tempo of newly added files to that of the song, you can do the opposite. Here we have a live recording with, at the end, a very pronounced ritardando. Drag this event to the tempo track of the DAW. The song tempo, ruler, and grid will now adjust to the tempo of the piano. This allows you to edit with beat accuracy, quantize MIDI tracks to keep exact time with the piano, as well as synchronize delay times to it. And every
Everything else in the song, such as this drum loop, also follows automatically the tempo set by the pianist. Quite independently of such tempo tricks, the DOM, thanks to ARA support, also offers perfect audio to MIDI. Just drag a Melodyne part to the synthesizer track. Here, for instance, I'm doubling a guitar with a synth pad, which immediately gives me further options, for a remix perhaps. And finally, when saving your song, you have nothing more to think about. Here, ARA ensures that all the info Melodyne needs is saved along with the DAW project.